Hello, everybody. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And I am Mally Moore. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. Thank you for joining us. This is episode three. Uh, if you're new to the podcast, this is a show where we uh, take some movies that have some sad endings and we try to talk about them and uh, try to find a silver lining at the end of it. Things that are, you know, uh, a silver lining, a, a, glimp of, a glimmer of hope at the end of everything. Uh, today's episode is kind of a, a special one. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we kind of take turns picking what episode we're going to do. So this was Molly's suggestion. Yes, it was. And I regret it already because I'm sad. <laughs> it's a good movie, though. I love oh, it. Oh, no. This is a great movie. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. So you can tell by the title. Today's episode is, of course, 2010's Blue Valentine, directed by Derek Cianfrance. Yes, Actually, we had to look that we up. We had to look that up. <laughs> uh, it's starring Ryan Gosling, Baby Goose, and Michelle Williams. <laughs> and I don't think he's much of a baby in this movie. He's kind of grown his wings. Jeez. Mm. <laughs> At a budget mm-hmm. of three and a half million dollars, only earned twelve million dollars worldwide. But that's still you know, what almost, do you mean only earn? That's like four times. I'll say it's four times. Four times, times it's budget. still pretty good. Uh, certified fresh at eighty eight percent. Too low. Yeah, agree. It should be higher. And uh, nominated for an Oscar for Miss Michelle Williams best performance by an actress in a leading role. Oh, I actually didn't know that. Yep, I didn't either. Oh, that's fantastic. It's great. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll listen to the trailer. You ready? Uh, ready when you are. All right. You got any like talents? Like hidden talents? Can you dance? You can tap dance? Can you? No. Here, I'll play a song and you dance. Okay. I can't really sing. I have to sing goofy in order to sing. Like, I have to sing stupid. Okay? Okay. To this part. And if I were old, your heart last night, it's because I love you most. So the trailer, if anybody knows anything about this movie, knows the ukulele song. I would oh, think. yes. And that's what the trailer is, you know, uh, just playing the song. And we get glimpses of that scene as well as some images of not so happy times, images of happy times long gone. And that is actually Ryan Gosling singing. Agree. And shameless plug, if you haven't listened to his band, Dead Man's Bones, I highly recommend. I haven't ever listened to they him. They are I know fantastic. About him. I well. Uh, one of their songs is actually in The Conjuring. Oh, the first one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I'll, I think this is the best kind of trailer. Oh, this it's perfect. I mean, it, it's one of the things I like about trailers like this is that they just take essentially a scene from the movie and they just let it play out. In this case, they kind of like lay over images of other scenes in the mm-hmm. movie. But I think it's great because it sets the tone, it introduces you to some characters, and it doesn't spoil the plot. Yeah, go if you just go into this movie after only seeing this trailer, you don't get anything from yeah, this trailer. Yeah, you, you really don't. <laughs> That's I mean, I like trailers like this, like that are similar to like Beast of No Nation did the same thing with their right, first trailer, right, right. Black Mass with its first trailer yep. at the table. That's such a great, good, that, great. Those are great trailers. I would watch uh, the Black Mass trailer. I will watch all the time. I can't say this. Can't watch the, the movie, movie. Yeah, but. That's I. Ho- I wish that was like a more recurring trend with bigger movies. Oh, I agree like completely. That. 
Okay, so are you ready, Mally, to discuss Blue Valentine and try to find a silver lining at the end? I'm not ready, but let's do it. All right. So what's your first impression of Ryan Gosling and Michelle Williams' characters? Just right off the bat. Oh, man. Because we started the movie in... Emotionally not prepared for any of this right now. We started the movie in what is better known as the not-so-happy times. Yeah, I guess the... Do you want... Should we go past and present? Yeah, we'll, we'll go, we th- we'll go through to him? beat by beat and how the movie does it. Okay. So the first scene, we start off with uh, little Frankie, mm-hmm. their daughter, looking for their dog, Megan. Yes. Uh, and she can't find can't find Megan, so she goes inside to wake her daddy up. That's Baby Goose. Mm-hmm. Uh, they go He's looking. putting in work in this movie, too. <laughs> He's looking great. Looking fantastic. <laughs> I hope that if I, if I ever become like an alcoholic like that, I age that gracefully. I oh, mean, no. I think I'm... Minus the receding hairline. I think I'm slowly turning into Ryan Gosling in this movie. <laughs> And I think it might be on purpose. <laughs> um, so yeah, she, uh, little Frankie wakes up Ryan Gosling. They can't find the dog, so they go and decide to wake up uh, the mom, Michelle Williams, who's sleeping. And she is pissed. She is very okay. Two <gasps> things about this. First off, my first impression of Ryan Gosling is he's a great dad. Oh yeah. Just now, I mean, just I don't know. It's not about he's patient. He's playful yeah, with you, his kid. Yeah, you can say like, he loves his daughter. He loves her. And then, I'm again, this is first impression, so I think the mom's kind of an asshole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, I'm not saying she's a bad mom, but I, she's definitely not as playful as, as Ryan is. Yeah, it's kind of that like good cop, bad cop yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But that's just first impressions. And mm-hmm. I was, the second thing I want to say is I completely... This is one of the few times I completely sympathize and related to her. I hate... <laughs> hate being woken up <laughs> i hate when people ruin my sleep my girlfriend does it to me every morning yep. i get woken up with her lay the my baby on me lay my son on me <laughs> every morning i wake up and open my eyes he's just staring me right at the face every morning and i i love my son i love my girlfriend but i hate waking up like that. <laughs> if i'm sleeping let me sleep yeah yeah you know and i the thing is i do the opposite for her i let her sleep i tiptoe around the house not the case when i'm asleep no, just, just complete disregard. <laughs> no, man, I'm single and don't have kids, so I sleep like all the time. It's but if, awesome. But if someone wakes you up, it's not. They're going to get punched yeah, in the throat. It's not great. Um, so they're getting Frankie ready. Uh, there's a little cute little scene where they're eating oatmeal and raisins off the table. Like, is it they're eat, let's eat it like panthers? Is that what it is? Or is it leopards? I want to say leopard. It's one of those two. I don't think it's panther. Which is what a strange animal yeah, to go to. Yeah, not like an antelope. Or even something. like, let's just eat it like a cat. Or yeah, that yeah, works. Yeah, jumping straight that's, to that's big a, cats. That's a nice little scene. That is, I love that and little. You, I love every. I love every scene in this movie. That's that's yeah. Uh, then we go to uh, what is her? What is Michelle Williams' character's name? I can't even remember. <laughs> Cindy. 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 We go to Cindy's. Yeah, Dean uh, and Cindy. Dean and Cindy. Which is funny because it's DC. Which is Derek C in France. It's his initials. Derek Holy C. shit. I don't think that was like on purpose, but it's not. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Um, So we go to, to Cindy's work and we're introduced to this doctor who immediately starts pumping out uh, pervy vibes. Yeah, this guy sucks. Right. Well, at first, in your first impression, you're like, okay, he's kind of sleazy, but you don't really know why. And at right. the end of the film, when we come back to this office, you'll see why. But we'll get there when we get there. Uh, so he makes a comment, and we don't really know what he's talking about, but he's ask, talking about her relocating. Mm-hmm. Okay? So we'll find out at the end that that's actually a job yeah, offer. That, yeah, that comes back around. Yeah. Uh, and Cindy doesn't seem too enthralled by this dude making moves on her. No. Yeah. Not at all. Hmm. Well, let's go on to the next scene where Moving she's uh, driving down the road. And we also get uh, intercuts with Dean riding down the road as well, At, listening to music. He's literally driving down the street, and I can't. What's the song he's listening? I to? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. It's uh, some kind of like country song. It's something. Yeah. Just drinking a beer like, while yeah, driving. That's like a fun dude's time. living the life. Yeah, that dude has got it. Dude made. is living the life. And, but I do know the song she's listening to because I oh, think yes. it's obviously you know oh, on yes. purpose foreshadowing. Where she's listening to Pat Benatar's "We Belong Together." And if you have never heard that song, mm-hmm. turn this off. Let's jam it, dude. <laughs> we might as well. <laughs> she's not listening to Mariah Carey's Blonde. We belong together, though. I will say that. Good. But uh, she's driving down the road, and 
uh, we find out that Megan is dead on the side of the road. Yeah, this is like the. F- I mean, this movie. There are a lot of moments where like they just rip your heart out and just mm-hmm. stomp on it. This is the first one. For the longest time, I had no idea what was happening in the scene because they don't really like give you like a shot of Megan, right? And I was just like, "What is? Why is she just pulling it on the side of the road?" Yeah, and, yeah. So yeah, we kind of we go. I to, don't deal well with animals. Yeah. And so you know, there's a website. Them. That what? you can look up to see if the dog in a movie dies. And it's, I think it's literally called Does the Dog Live.com. Okay, like uh, let's bookmark that. And so, yeah, that movie, that website would obviously let you know a little spoiler alert that no, Megan does not make it out. Um, no, I'm so sad again. We cut to uh, Dean is at a recital for Frankie. Yep. And Cindy is late showing up. Um, but when she gets there, she informs Dean that. She found Megan dead, and uh, Dean lets us know that she was responsible for it because she didn't lock the gate. Yeah, for that's Megan's cage. Some heavy shit. So we already got a two, a one-two punch for Cindy. She's got a pervy doctor hitting on her, and she's responsible for her daughter's dog dying. Mm-hmm. Um, also, callback, real, real, really early callback, but yes, it is dog. Duh, does the dog die? Dot com. Sweet. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to type in Blue Valentine real quick and just see if there's anything on it. Yep. Yeah, of course. There, Phil, it has to be on The family there. dog runs away and is later found dead on the side of the road, possibly having been hit by a car. <sighs> they have a little number count, too, like how many dogs die in a movie. Really? For, like, this movie. It's obviously one. But, well, right. You know. Okay. All right. So, Sydney has a little mini breakdown, I think, at the recital. She's kind of upset. And this is when we first start getting our flashbacks. Well, we'll say these are the happier times. And uh, this is this is where we can see the intimacy between the characters. Yeah. And I don't just mean between Cindy and Dean. I mean just everybody. This is uh, Dean talking to some of his coworkers at this moving company. And they're talking about... Which if no one's ever worked at a moving company, it sucks. I never worked at a moving company. It is literally some of the worst... Is it accurately like depicted do. in here where like they're strapping boxes to their backs? No, no, yeah, they no, they nailed it. It just sucks. Well, that's a real moving company too, and I think I believe the yeah. other actors are all actual movers. I believe you're right. Yeah, but what I'm talking about with intimacy between creators, we see this between uh, I, I don't know the guy's name, but the the black gentleman that he's talking to, mm-hmm. uh, that Ryan Goose <laughs> Ryan Goose Ryan is talking Goose. to. And they're talking about the difference uh, the differences between men and women when it comes to romance, and I was looking for so long for a way to verbalize exactly what he says in this sentence. And well, in this little paragraph here, I'm gonna read it real quick to you. Okay. I mean, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, but I think it's important, uh, just to read it as is and let it soak in a little bit. So yeah, like I said, they're talking about the difference between men and women, romance, marriage, things like that. And, uh, Ryan Gosling says, uh, talking about men, he says, when we get married, uh, we marry like one girl cause we're resistant the whole way. Until we meet one girl and we think, I'd be an idiot if I didn't marry this girl. She's so great. But it seems like girls go uh, get to a place where they just kind of pick the best option. Oh, he's got a good job. I mean, they spend their whole life looking for Prince Charming and then they marry the guy who's got a, ju- a good job and is going to stick around. Which, of course, that's not a blanket statement. Right. Like, it's not, you know, case. it's case by case. But I... I had completely identify with that statement. Oh, no. That's spot on. I mean, I... I I, I kind of I kind of agree that men are more romantic in the sense that we do hold out and we do wait for the one. Mm-hmm. Whereas, and again, that's, this might sound a little sexist, or whatever. But I do think that most women do kind of. We just had so many people unsubscribe. <laughs> let me let me explain first. I do think that a lot of women will try to make each guy they're with the, yes. the number one. They try to make them, whereas guys kind of take it at face value. They're like, she's obvious. I'm not going to make her. Right. My instead of one. <clears throat> excuse me, instead of waiting for the one, they mm-hmm. try to create the one. The, the fixer upper. Right. <laughs> the, the the classic fixer upper. Uh what do you think about this about this scene? Do you uh do you resonate does it resonate with you like it does with me? Oh no, completely. Yeah. Like it just this entire this entire movie hit me like a hits me like a freight train every time I yeah. watch it. It's and, and it's too so real. real. Yeah, it's so real. Like too the way real. they talk and the like, like the language, the cadence, everything is, and that's how you would probably talk to somebody. Oh no, completely. Like that, yeah. Well, and I think like one of the biggest parts of it being so real is that 
I mean, most of the dialogue was improvised yeah. on set. And that's what you need for a good drama or yeah. romance or something like that. It's improvisation. It's, it's, not actu- it's to actual chemistry yeah. between the characters. I think Derek Derek is, uh, the director, Derek San Francis, yeah. great at this, improv- this type of movie. Uh, I would love to get my hands on the script. Yeah. I, wanna, I, I, think I would I love it, to actually. see the differences. I think I have it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I know he went, th- we're going to talk about this in the trivia section, but we, he went through a lot oh, of drafts. A lot. Oh, yeah. He worked on this for years. years. Okay. Um, so this is where Dean starts, you know, is starts working at this moving company regularly. And I, I kind of like this. I mean, we kind of skipped it, but I kind of like the scene where he's in his interview and he's so casual and informal. Yep. And it's just like, do you have a car? He's like, I'll get here. <laughs> That's my favorite part of that scene. He's like, I'll get here. As I okay, as someone who hasn't had a car in years, I completely relate to that because <laughs> that is my response for most things. Yeah. Um. So Dean, we're introduced to Old Man Walter, and this is the older oh, gentleman that the Dean is Old up Man in. Walter I, scene. I love Old Man Walter. Old Man Walter. He says he I is think, a G. I think he says two words. I think oh he yeah. Says Thank you, and that's it. But he is awesome. Well, just. Um, like I don't know, it's I almost can't explain it, but just <coughs> it just adds so much to the Dean character mm-hmm. watching him, like seeing how much he cares about just like decorating this old man's room. He, he's a giving person. Yeah, and like the other movers are just like, dude, come what on, are we gotta you go. Doing? Yeah, what are you like, doing? Come on, we, we gotta go. We have work to do. Yeah, and he's like, I, no, no, no. Just let me, you know, let me nail all these matches to mm-hmm. the wall. Yep. I said, not only get great characterization and giving you like character traits, but it's showing you how, like I said, intimacy. This yeah. whole movie is filled with intimacy, whether it's good or bad. Uh, you really get to know mm-hmm. Dean and Cindy mm-hmm. almost too much. Yeah. Um. So he's helping Walter move, and Walter's house is a sh- is a sh- it's like an episode of Hoarders when they oh, get yeah. there. Oh yeah. Uh, and Dean and the, the crew load up all of Walter's stuff, move him into, I'm assuming this is kind of like a retirement home, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I would assume so. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, like we said, the, the movers are like, come on, we got to go to a new place. And Dean starts unboxing things and decorating this room for this guy. Uh, and then old old man Walter comes in and gets to see what it looks like. And at first I thought he might have been a little uh, upset that, right. that he touched his stuff and yeah. everything. But... He comes in. He just he's looking around in shock, just like holy shit, this looks great. Yeah, how how nice of a guy to do this for me. Uh, and I, yeah, like I said, I just love the interaction between these two because Baby Goose is so nice to him, and just I I don't want to tap myself on the back, but I feel like I talk to old people that way, especially older <laughs> older people like that. Like I just do. I, I right, love no. old people. I really do. Yeah. Unless they're the the Who old doesn't the old school racist you know or whatever but i love old people. even they have their moments moments i will say moments <laughs> very few and far between but yeah this movie would have been so different if old man walter just <laughs> said something saying about, some racist said something about shit. the uh, the black movie <laughs> yeah this would have taken a weird turn yeah uh and then maybe ryan gosling just gets up the eyebrows like the what the fuck those gosling eyebrows man <laughs> Um, because in these flashback scenes, Ryan Gosling looks like Ryan Gosling. Mm-hmm. He could charm anyone. He's so damn charming. Yeah. So charming. Yes. Now in the present scenes, he literally just looks like the director of this movie. Yeah. Uh. So the the uh one of the movers pays <clears throat> Ryan Gosling in cash and leaves it on Walter's nightstand. Mm-hmm. And as he's leaving, uh, Dean picks takes a cash button in his pocket and he realizes. Someone across the hall is watching him, which mm-hmm. we'll come back to that. Yep. This is where the scene cuts. We don't get to see who he's looking at. Um, so we cut to uh, the not so happy times, the present day. Oh. Uh, wouldn't you know that Gosling's digging a hole to bury Megan? <coughs> and I do know, I couldn't find this in the trivia section, but I know I've read this before that the director actually had Gosling really dig that hole. See, I thought that was right. Mm-hmm. I, I looked for that like trivia too, and because I'd heard that somewhere mm-hmm. before. I don't know if Gosling did it himself to get into character or the director told him you have to do this, but he really did have to do it and bury the dog. And then uh, we cut to you know him crying and Cindy consoling him, and that's him really crying. He said he broke down in tears and mm-hmm. everything. Again, this movie is too real i think it's it's all in the fucking direction dude like he knew how to get these people to do what he wanted them to do it's just a oh, master no, this, class man at this point i would just call the director a manipulator yeah. <laughs> than anything else and then um 
Gosling starts watching some whole movies of Frankie and Megan when they were younger. Uh, and Cindy is just kind of oblivious to all of it. She's just kind of walking around cleaning a house. Yeah. Doesn't really care. And uh, this is what I find that's weird. I, I, this is my note. Yeah, I, like, I kind of have to agree with this one. He's watching whole movies and then all of a sudden decides to book an appointment at a, which is basically a, a hotel for sex. Yeah, no. Which I don't even, is. what is this? You book a Dude. room based on a theme and fucking it? What do you, what do you, yeah. is that a real thing? No, no, yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, a real thing. It, I mean, I, it, obviously it's a real thing, but like, who, oh, what kind Dustin, of business you have model? not lived, sir. I guess not. I've been fucked in the Cupid's room. You gotta, you, you're not talking to the right people, man. Man. Okay. I, no, like, no, is this, it like a regular motel and they just happen to have certain rooms? It's like, or? well, that, okay. Is it a tourist thing? I feel like you don't usually see, I, again, do they ever state where this takes place? I, I mean, don't it's, think so. Is it? I'm assuming it's I'm New North, York. I, I, like, I believe. It's in New York, maybe. Yeah, because I think he works in the city. Yeah. But I think it actually takes place in the outskirts. Yeah, like the um, outskirts of the city, yeah. Yeah, no, like in New York or like Vegas or something like that, you would, like, they definitely have these, like, themed hotels. Right. You say so. All right, so uh, Sydney and Dean go to the grocery store where Sydney goes in to get alcohol mm-hmm. for their trip. And she bumps into Mike Vogel, who is playing Bobby. Now, we get uh, from a little, like, subtlety, a little subtext that these two had a relationship at some point. Yeah, you don't, we're not shown, but it's not yet hinted yeah. at. A lot. This movie does a lot of things where it shows you things and then gives you the backstory later. Mm-hmm. So you kind of connect with it. But, uh, well, I guess tells you things. Yeah. Um, Bobby kind of subtly makes a move on her and she's a little taken aback and decides to just leave. Um, then they get back in the car and he's driving and she tells Dean, you know, I bumped into this guy in the store and Dean is, Dean is not happy. Hissed. Um, yeah, she's just, she's upset. So as he's kind of berating her or whatever, they pull her on the side of the road and she just, she says, she says she's going to go pee and they're just on the side of the road, which I, yeah, that I don't know. I guess this hotel is very far out that they've got to make a whole trip out of it, but she ends up crying in the woods basically. Um, and then we get we going back to happier times, and this is I don't get. Okay, I get what's happening, but I don't get one little thing. So we're going back to when Cindy was in college, right? And she's going to visit her boyfriend, who's a rest, who's Bobby, yeah, who's a wrestling uh, athlete, whatever you want to call it. But she's it. in a wheelchair. Yes. Now I get that after this scene, she goes to see her grandmother, who is in the wheelchair. So I'm assuming she's bringing her uh, the wheelchair, right? Why is she running, walking around, well, not walking, strolling around campus on this wheelchair acting like a paraplegic? Why the fuck not? I I mean, I guess if you want to get places quicker and... (laughs) I just never thought of it, I guess. So, if you're telling me I, if there was a wheelchair right here, you wouldn't sit around and just go for a stroll in it? I'd probably sit around and do this podcast, like mobile. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) She had had a wheelchair. Let's all right. Let's let's assume she's taking the wheelchair to her grandmother. Mm-hmm. Is it the same wheelchair? Because I didn't look. I mean, I'm. I'll get back to you on that. Not a wheelchair. No idea. <laughs> um, so let's let's assume she's taking the wheelchair there. Mm-hmm. Well, she's gonna go visit him first. She got she's got to get from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. I mean, why okay. walk when you got a set of wheels? I guess I <laughs> I felt it's a little insulting to me, but. Well, I mean, if no one knows, she, whatever. I mean, she's kind of, you know, she's a, uh, I guess, I guess, kooky. Would that be the word I would want to use? I don't even know what the word is. I don't. I guess this is the she's, best. I mean, you she's, go for. <laughs> she's a young, you know, twenty-something year old. Yeah, like, you know, so. we we do silly things mm-hmm. on occasion. So I'm just gonna chalk it up to that. I love that when she first sees her boyfriend, and you know, she's in the wheelchair. He. uh calls her a quadriplegic and, she has and then she corrects him, him. She's yeah. like, no i'm a paraplegic i wouldn't be able to use my arms and like that just proves that he's just a fucking meathead dude. yeah <laughs> like um, it's it's that point where you're like this guy's an idiot mm-hmm. so we cut to a scene where cindy is eating dinner with her mom and dad mm-hmm. and their grandmother and for some reason i don't know why this has to be in the, the movie but for some reason cindy's dad is like an angry i'm assuming drunk Maybe. Yeah, I believe so. Maybe that's supposed to mirror kind of what Dean ends up I being. I think so. Uh, but yeah, he just flips out for some for whatever reason. I think it's great because well, he's like, "Are we supposed to eat this shit?" It looks like a decent meal to me. Yeah, that's. And I, then he like flips the table, the the plate, and 
the mom even asked her, like, do you want me to make you some eggs? Or right. <laughs> well, is that a play on like the whole like, because I know for guys, it's always like, you know, like, oh, guys marry a girl that's similar to, to their, their mother. mother. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, is it similar to like a girl marries a guy that's similar to her father? See that you never hear that one. Yeah, you, you don't never hear, hear the other that side one. Of but that does coin. it? I mean, does it work both ways I, like I, that? I, well, maybe that's the whole where the whole you know cliche thing about daddy issues. Right. Maybe that's where that comes from. I don't know. Again, I'm it not speaking be. a blanket statement for women because I'm not one, so I'll never know. But that's what I'm assuming based on like, what this movie is telling me. Right. So this is where we cut back to the happier times, and we get to see, we get to see who Baby Goose was looking at when he was taking his money off of mm-hmm. Walter's counter. He sees. Cindy across the hall in uh, the room where her grandmother's staying. And Sydney thinks that she's, that uh, Ryan Gosling is stealing money from Walter. Because all she sees is a guy taking cash from this old man. Right. So Ryan Gosling goes across the hall, knocks on the door, and they have a little conversation with the door cracked open. And, uh, God, I he love has a good, this it's, so, it's such a good uh, meet cute. Like the whole, oh, yeah, completely. what's your name? Uh, go away, go away. That's a weird name yep. or something like that. Um, but he gives her... His business card, which do movers have business cards like biggest the individual of disbelief of all time? Well, let me ask you: Did you have a business card with your no. name on it? Hell no! <laughs> or did you keep the business business card, like the actual company's business card? Yes, but my name was nowhere on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's like that scene in Silver Linings, uh Play uh, playbook where the cop leaves and says, "Here's my card," and right. the Cooper's like, "What kind of police officer has a business?" Card? Yeah, no, it, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> All right, so we end up in the future room, this sex hotel oh back my in God. the not so happy times, and this is one of my favorite scenes for the movie, just because I it's so stupid it makes me laugh. There's but, not a single window in this hotel room, and it's yeah, and that creeps me out, mm-hmm. man. And uh, it seems like the padding, like the siding, is like aluminum. Yeah, like it's really weird, but the future looks like it's gonna suck. I love that Ryan Gosling lays on the bed, puts a rose in between his teeth, and it's like this is how we laugh in the future. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> and then he calls Frankie, and that's the first thing he says. Is, Frankie, this is how people laugh in the future. <laughs> yeah, like he's like, oh, my wife doesn't think it's funny. Let me call my daughter; she'll appreciate it. I fucking love it. And he he calls his daughter from a sex hotel. Yep. Yep, that's the first thing he says, too. He's like, Frankie, let me tell you how they laugh in the future. <laughs> I see, Lord. that's again, he's a great dad. He's so playful with her. Yes. He's not even like, hi, this is daddy. You know, how you doing? But just straight to the jokes. I think it's great. Uh, but then, then this gets intercut again with the pre- with the, the happier times, the past. And uh, actually, this in well, particular man, is not, not so happy. happy on this one. Yeah, not so happy. We find out that Dean goes back. Uh, to to Walters because he's got a he made a locket for him. It's got his wife's photo in it, his uh, deceased wife and Walter, a younger picture of Walter as well. Mm-hmm. And he goes back and turns out Walter's room has been cleaned out and Walter's nowhere to be found. So it's obviously implied that old man Walter has passed away. Yeah. Um. So again, just just uh, rips your heart yeah. out, stomps on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ryan Gosling goes across the hall and knocks on uh, Cindy's grandmother's door and inquires about the blonde that was there before. Doesn't she, grandma doesn't give her give him really any hope. But uh, but uh, Baby Goose catches the bus and when you know it, Cindy happens to be on the bus. And yeah, <laughs> it's pretty great because the bus is nearly empty and he approaches her and says, you know, can I sit on? Can I have this seat? All the other seats are taken. And she's kind of just just ignoring him, just like whatever. You know, oh, yeah, she's not completely. interested in him. But he uh, he makes a comment. Uh, I don't remember exactly how this comic uh, this comment comes up organically, but he says pretty much that uh, the prettier a girl is, the more nuts they are. So you must be psychotic or something. Oh, like insanely that. accurate too. Very charming too. Like it just unreal. Like that line would never work for me. People would think I'm a psycho. The hot crazy scale. It's the beard, the eyes. No, yep. no one would. Yeah, I would get called immediately off that bus. <laughs> but it's Ryan Gosling. God, he can get away charm. with it. Infinite charm. Uh, you talk about jokes. And Cindy tells this joke about a child molester, which is a yeah. pretty dark joke. But it's a bold move. I, I liked I thought it was funny. Oh, it's, it's hilarious. It's greatly offensive. But <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean most good jokes are. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, and Ryan Gosling seems like he doesn't want to laugh, but I think he breaks character here and he does laugh. Yeah, a little bit. And they just decided to keep that take. Um, 
And of course, they get off. They kind of connect a little bit. They get off the bus, and this is where they have the dancing ukulele the scene. scene. Scene from the trailer. Oh, it's it's a it's perfect. Yeah, like, I agree. I, I, anyone can come at me, argue <laughs> with me. I don't care. This scene is perfect. So he's really playing the ukulele, and he's really singing. And it's just so. And like it was. It's another cute moment. It's, it, it's, and again, it was completely improvised. Yep. And it's it's the the like here's here's your candy before I rip it away from you kind of moment. Because <laughs> like they were told like they were told like to keep like their talents sick. like yep that's in my trivia a secret. Section. Oh, oh it's so good! It's a great scene, and it's all it's all a winner for the most part. Yeah. Um. All right. We cut back to. Man, it's, just, it's still heartbreaking. We cut back to present day, mm-hmm. and they're ha- they're drinking in the sex room, and they're having this conversation about potential. Yeah. And anyone who knows me knows I am strongly on the side of Cindy in this conversation. I actually made a blog post about it a couple weeks back uh, about wasting potential. Which, granted, it's a, it's again it's a case by case thing, but you know she's basically saying. You're a house painter. Don't you want more out of life? You know, and don't, you have so much potential. You can draw. You can sing. All these things. And he makes this comment of potential for what? What is their potential for? To right. make money? You know. And where, where do you stand on this, Matt? Do you think that if you have potential, dude, you I squander it or okay? I literally had like verbatim, basically had this conversation with someone I'm close with. A few months ago, yeah, and it like it. I and I was I was Dean in the scenario, really, and she was Cindy, and that's like this. That conversation is literally how I ended up down here. Yeah. So I, you know, I was on like I was. I don't know. I guess the way it differs from this movie is that, you know, I saw I guess the light, mm-hmm. and you know I saw that you know i was wasting my potential so you know i changed it whereas yeah. dean is much more argumentative and he's got his points but again you don't have to do what you enjoy doing or things you're good at just to make money like right. no i'm not in this business to make money no. i genuinely enjoy want to make movies i'm, I don't, here. I'm here to party yeah money, money will come <laughs> i mean i'm not worried about that i just want to make good movies that's all yeah, i want to no, do for sure and that's why i kind of side side with cindy on this but again you know, it's it's an interesting dynamic to you know the struggle between the two, mm-hmm. and it's just driving a wedge further and further in between them. Uh, I love this comment because she makes a comment saying, "You know, I wish you didn't have a job where you had to drink at eight in the morning to go to it." And he makes a comment which I love, <laughs> so good. I have a job where I can drink at eight in the morning. It's a luxury. And that is a luxury because he's I used not to, wrong. I used to you used to do this. Too. You used to work third shifts, yep. and would you not? possibly have a drink when you got off work at like five or six in the morning of course i would, I would. <laughs> I would have i would get off around like six or seven in the morning yep. have a drink go to bed wake up go to class yep <laughs> it is a luxury it's great to to have a drink when the sun's coming up it's yes. awesome so uh, this scene we uh, might be terrible people i know we've already talked about like sexism and now day drinking drinking while driving this movie's really opening. Yeah, we're gonna have doors. to rethink this. Um, uh, we, don't advocate, on. we don't advocate any, any of the illegal or offensive stuff. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, this scene is the pinnacle of. Uh, the, I, don't, what, I, the, I would break, say this is where break. it all starts going downhill. But this movie started mm-hmm. going downhill mm-hmm. the moment it started. Dean kind of makes his offhanded comment as he's kind of trying to put the moves on Sydney, that they're, and they're both drunk. Yep. That he wants to have another baby. He kind of oh. whispers it to her, whatever. Yeah. Well, he asks her. He's like, "Do you want to have another baby with me? I want to have another baby with you." And the scene turns really weird really quick. They start, you know, having sex, but it kind of turns into almost a rapey scene. Yes, it does. Uh, and he, you know, I, she's kind of making this motion she's kind of hitting him and she's kind of hinting that he wants she wants her to hit him and he refuses to and what's really weird is we get this kind of intercut with not necessarily the first time uh dean and cindy had sex but we cut this is where the nc-17 rating came yep. from where it gets cut intercut with the cunnilingus sex scene yep. between uh her 
her and Dean, and it's it's just polar opposites, like oh, total completely. contrast. And it's completely. very upsetting. You know what? I, I, we've got to mention something before we get this to the next part, but uh, we get it in a flashback that Bobby uh, and Sydney uh, had unprotected sex, yep. and you know now she turns out she's pregnant. Yep. While she's meeting Dean and dating, kind of dating Dean. Yeah. Um, that was pivotal. How did we skip over that? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I I don't. I just, I was so invoked in the movie. I forgot to take notes. Of that Sorry, part. guys. This is where we get the bridge scene. Uh, this scene again. We'll get to the trivia again. with this, but improvised. Perfect. Improvised. Totally improvised. Uh, the bridge scene. Sydney and uh, Dean. This is back in the happier times. Well, quote. Well, now it's getting almost. Yeah, I don't blurring the lines. Sydney and Dean are walking along this bridge. Um, and Sydney's acting weird. Dean makes a comment, and you know he can tell she's keep, he's keeping something from her. So right. he, he threatens to to jump off the bridge, essentially climb mm-hmm. the fence and jump over. And she reveals to him that she's pregnant. And he asks if it's his, and she kind of doesn't really answer. Yeah. And they kind of hint at he kind of hints at I don't want to say he suggested, but he kind of hints at the idea of an abortion, or asking her, "Are you going to do it?" Yeah, yeah. And she doesn't say anything. And then, you know, she starts, she walks away, and he just releases his anger out on that fence. It's pretty great. I love it. Again, I love just, it. oh, so good. Hmm. Um, I want to say this is the part where she tries to have the abortion, but just can, can't can can't do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she just couldn't do it, and Dean is just kind of like, all right, so here's a character that has fallen in love with this girl. Turns out she's pregnant. It's not his, or at least it's insinuated that it's not his. We never find out for sure. And agrees to stay with her anyway. You know, take care of a kid that's not his. And I have to say, different circumstances, but I'm in the same situation. Yes, you are. Dude, you're Ryan Gosling. God, dude, this is the closest (laughs) anyone would ever compare me to Ryan Gosling. My girlfriend had a a daughter uh, that was a little over a year old when I first met her, and I an absent father same situation mm-hmm. i decided to take up and and be her father and i still am she's not <laughs> she's not dead or anything <laughs> so we have and then we have our own our own son together so we have two children together and yeah this it's a totally different world it's I don't, i'm not patting myself on the back i'm patting ron gossing on the back in this case it's a totally <laughs> selfless act it's a noble act it's great it's a fantastic well form. i know at one point there were talks because they filmed the past scenes took a break and then filmed the later scenes. Yep. I know there were talks about them just not even shooting, not it. even shooting the later that's, scenes. That's and in like, my let's trivia just, section. Yep. Let's just go with this. And that would like, as much as I love this movie, like I, w- I would have watched that because like, just that's like, that story is so what if good. It was, what if it was a two parter? What if we had the oh, happier man. scenes as one movie and then the darker scenes as separate? You know, I don't It'd know. It'd be like going from the Philosopher's Stone up to Deathly Hallows Part 2. Yeah, just skipping <laughs> everything in between. Yep. So, uh, Bobby finds out about Dean. Yeah. And this is, I guess, where like he's the crazy ex-boyfriend that can't let it go. And him and his crew decide to beat beat up to jump Dean at his work. And Cindy tries to call him, oh, but it's so hard bringing he's his got phone headphones is ringing. on. He can't hear the phone ringing. The phone's ringing the whole time in this warehouse while he's getting his ad. And there's no one else around. No, it's or just like, in the, like in the warehouse. Like yeah. He's out there by himself. And what is there? It's, it's Bobby plus two of his friends, right? Bobby and two of his friends. Yeah. Bobby's the only one I think that jumps him and the two yeah. is kind of standing around, but still. <sighs> but, oh, that's so... And so Bobby like, gets his shit pushed in, basically. Yeah. And you like... The whole like, because at the beginning when she when we were first introduced, like, you don't really understand why Dean's so upset. Yeah, and I mean about Bobby right. in the car. Yeah, and yeah. I mean now you know. Yep. And this is where Dean has uh, dinner for the first time with Cindy's parents, and yeah, you can kind of see right. that at least the father figure doesn't really care for him that much. Yeah, but the mom, I don't. The mom doesn't really ever give you a feel for it. She um, seems a little more like sympathetic towards yeah. him because you kind of they dig in like Dean goes on about like his past like mm-hmm. he, re- he reveals went. he wasn't he didn't, he didn't graduate right his mom left at a young age mm-hmm. I believe and I don't I don't remember what he says about his dad oh his dad's a janitor that's right his dad's right. a janitor and he's proud of it and I love that yeah no no reason to be like, ashamed he, of that. he owns where he came from yeah. 
And I love that he he's his reasoning for dropping out of school was something like uh, there was nothing for me there or something yeah. like that. It's, <laughs> it's so great. Um, it, yeah, this is where he also introduces uh, their song that we heard. We kind of skipped over that part too, but we heard the quote unquote their song mm-hmm. in the sex room, and this is the first time when he were introduced to it, or that he introduces it to Cindy. Right. Uh, and then we cut back to so this is like almost almost the last little bit of happier times we get. Yeah. Before we cut back to present day, uh, Sydney leaves uh, Dean at this sex hotel just she because gets he's called into work mm-hmm, and he's drunk and passed out. So he yeah. just she just leaves him there, takes the car and leaves him there without a, a way to get home and just goes to work. So we get we find out more about this doctor. This doctor's offer is basically, hey, uh, you I have another practice up in another state, and I want you to come with. You can maybe get an apartment, stay here, work for this amount of time, go back to your family, stuff like that. And it's obviously he he even says it. He propositions her and then kind of takes yeah. it back. Like I didn't mean for that, but he's like, he oh, you know, we can get dinner and yep, you know yep. hang out on the weekends. He definitely meant for that to be a proposition. Oh yeah, completely. So Dean shows up to the daughter's office drunk. Yes. And rocking just the coolest sweater of all time, God, by the, the American way. American Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the receptionist there makes a comment. He's like, you know, I'm here to see Cindy. And he, she says, oh, you must be Dean. As if Cindy's just trash Yeah, so like, it's, it's implied time. that, you know, Dean's never really come around. Like, mm-hmm. the co-workers don't know him. But Cindy, but they, they know him based on what Yeah, they've heard him. enough about him. And it's him. not good. So Dean, is, you know kind of lashes out at Cindy, and i almost want to say rightfully so if he wasn't drunk i mean she did leave him there right like if he came at this sober sober maybe right like it would still it wouldn't still like, wouldn't be a was, good situation no, to do it like, at it, work, it was, at her it work. A, it's a conversation that needs to take place maybe not the right setting yeah maybe don't do it at her place of employment <laughs> not at all um so they start you know arguing whatever and Cindy wants to go outside. She doesn't want to be around mm-hmm. around him. And she even asks him, she's like, can you drive? Even though she, he's clearly drunk. And he gives she gives him the car keys. And he even makes a comment. He's like, you don't give a fuck if I die in a car wreck if I'm too drunk to drive. Right. And uh, she goes back inside and Dean decides to follow her. And this is where... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Before they exit outside, the receptionist makes a comment to Cindy saying, don't let him brainwash you. But they don't even know... This, right. They, they they only know what she's told They him. don't even know the guy. Right. Uh, she's, she's, they're literally seeing him at his worst. Yeah. Which is, you know, first impressions Completely. mean everything. I mean, we clearly saw that at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. But still, it's just... Ugh. Ah, so anyway, Cindy goes back inside the daughter's office and Dean comes in and follows and they kind of go to like this room, this, I don't know, like a break room and they yeah. just start having this argument and this is where Cindy reveals to him and she even says, and I'm quoting, that she is so out of love with him and that he is the bad guy. Yep. Let's break this down. Oh God. You are given virtually, I want to say virtually because there's, I mean, there's probably little things here and there, but virtually mm-hmm. no reason why he's the bad guy. Maybe this is just some stuff in between the happier times and the not so happy times that we missed out on. Yeah, that's see, that's the thing we miss. We get the beginning of the relationship, and I mean, ten years, maybe a little kind of. The, well, no, well, it, can, it can't even be because Frankie. It's I think six years. Six years, so yeah. he goes downhill quick. Yeah, maybe well, something happened then. Yeah, so we only get the beginning and the end. We don't see what happened in the middle. Well, how he kind of fell down. And yeah, and, and I have like something. I know there's. I don't know. We'll we'll get into it once let's let's once we wrap up the All summary right. here. I'll I'll get into what I think about That's it. That's just such a devastating line to hear, especially from someone you're married to for that long. Like, someone who's yeah, kid like you're taking care of. That's someone not yours. literally telling you, "I am not Out of in love, love with, you. with you." Not even that, but you're the bad guy. Yeah, it's like like I don't love you anymore, and it's your fault. I mean, it's different if you tell someone, "I don't want to be in a relationship with you anymore," and then you feel like the bad guy. I mean, that's happened to me before. Oh, no, yeah, I've obviously completely. been the the reason for a lot of my breakups. Mm-hmm. However, I take with that, like, okay, that was my fault. But yeah. to have someone point it out, it's like like double whammy, like to the gut. You're just like, well, fuck. Yeah, like she like she's not taking any of the blame on that. She she's, just, it's all she's on him. She's completely done. She hates him at this point. It's mm-hmm. just done. Uh, and they start having another argument. You're yelling, and then the doctor comes in, and Dean, we find out that this doctor has been emailing Cindy. Yep. And D, this is so great because Dean gives him a warning saying, I'm going to punch you in five seconds. And he literally counts down yep. 
from five. And the guy just does it, ignores him, and he punches him right square in the face. And he even yeah. makes a comment because the dude falls down. And he's like, what, you got a glass jar or something? <laughs> <laughs> but you can't take one punch without passing. I loved it. That was great. Like, if someone tells you, they're, like, in five seconds, they're going to hit you. They're not joking. Maybe step away from that situation. <laughs> maybe they're not. Maybe they are joking. But when they actually start counting now, they get close yeah. to one. Maybe you should fucking <laughs> just take a step back. Get out of swinging range. I would have hit him. I'm even if I was. Yeah. I mean, if you're emailing my wife and making propositions, I'm going to hit you. I, and I, he gave him the courtesy, the decency of giving him a warning. Yeah. No, he <laughs> warned him. He gave him the countdown. Mm-hmm. I blame the doctor. So Sydney gets fired from her job for causing this r- ruckus. Because the doc- the doctor fires her mm-hmm. because he can't take a warning. Yep. Basically. Dick. Uh, and they head outside and Sydney just tells him, I want a divorce. Yeah. So Dean, you know, takes his wedding ring off, throws in the woods, and they start heading home. Which is odd that they head home together in the car, which I figure like this, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near you. I mean, that's... He had no problem taking a cab any other time. How many times has that, like, I, that's happened to me where I've I had, had, like, a major argument and then, you know, we've had to continue on with so our life. Weird. Is this, do we only see him driving once with the beer can at the beginning? Because I think he's in the passenger seat every other scene. You might be right, actually. It's weird. I don't know. Um, But this is weird. He throws his wedding ring out into, like, the little grassy area. Uh, in the parking lot and then they both go looking for it yeah do they find it why are they why does she care why are they look why does he care at this point why are they looking for it is he trying to maybe like rekindle things or like maybe there's uh, hope? i think it was a spur like a spur him of the throwing moment. it was a very spur of the moment thing like i mean there's like especially in arguments like mm. you'll just yell something out and then immediately you're just like i should not have said that yeah i think this is similar like he out of frustration he just throws the ring and he's like shit yeah and he goes back and looks for it um man so yeah <sighs> we get this uh this you know we go to the grandfather's house where frankie is and uh and dean logs him out of his own house so they can have him and Cindy can have a conversation <laughs> such and, a nice little touch <laughs> such a great scene i wish we never saw that guy again it was just implied he died yeah <laughs> not having oxygen <laughs> um because he does the little, little lines like, you can't lock me out here my oxygen yeah my there. oxygen uh, this scene is juxtaposed with uh the, Sydney the and wedding Dean's scene. marriage, yeah, which is like this nice little quaint little wedding inside this little, almost like the the office, like a. Let's say I think it's just like a probate court, office, it's just like a yeah. courthouse this little marriage, courtroom. Isn't it? Yeah, he's got the sweet little blue tux on. Yeah, it's pretty oh great. I, man, I love that tux he's wearing. And this, like I said, it's intercut with the present day. So this is where he's he's like. He makes a comment. He's like, you know, we have a little girl to think about. It's not just us breaking up. And then he breaks down into tears, which is well, and still gut wrenching. So yeah. fucking gut wrenching. Well, and like, that's like, I, there's no right one to side with in this. Because yeah. he's like, you know, do you want our daughter to grow up in a broken home? Yeah. And she's like, well, do you want our daughter to grow up with two people that hate each other? Yeah. And it's, this is the only time where you can side with one or the other. And I feel like for the most movie, you're siding with Ryan Gosling. I really don't. Maybe it's just me, but I didn't see any redeeming quality in Cindy until this point. And this is the only thing she's, she, you know, she literally says what you said. Do you want her to grow up hating each other? Do you want her to grow up in a home, you know, whatever, a broken home? And yeah, this, you, you kind of make your side. And I still sided with, with Dean on that one. I mean, Dean, I side with Dean for for minor reasons. Cindy's definitely in the right. You definitely don't want to oh, stay yeah, together. Completely. But at the same time, they're I we'll get to this with the silver lining. But I think they're fixable. I really oh, do. Yeah, I think no, I think they are. Yeah. Um, like I feel like Cindy is more of the, I guess the logical one mm-hmm. in terms of the way she thinks, whereas Dean is driven know, by the heart. Yeah, pure emotion. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, the whole movie is those two things clashing. <sighs> so I, the film ends with Dean kind of just walking off. I want to say into the sunset because he kind of walks off into fireworks. Like, yeah, the there's, the yeah there's, fireworks. at the end of the street, there's people Which, lighting off fireworks. I don't know if that's, I mean, I get what it's, it's there for the end credits sequence where we get 
fireworks exploding and yeah. then montage of photos of them together. But I really don't know why there's fireworks there. Maybe it was just something happening on the street and the director's yeah. like, fuck it, production value. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, Dean kind of just walks off, Frankie runs after him and tell, he tells her go back to your mom and that's well, it. He, like oh my god, that scene is hard. He like tricks her mm-hmm. into running back cuz he's mom. like we'll race, we'll race and he's like all right, one, two, three, go. And then she goes. And yeah. she runs and he just walks off. Keeps like And you hear Frankie and crying off. too in her mom's arms. Yeah, like so she runs back to Cindy and like Cindy picks her up and you can hear her just being like, "Oh, I love him." Mm-hmm. And it's Oh, that's it god we got to black man that's the end of the movie <laughs> fuck your emotions dude <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck, fuck right. your romance story Jesus. this is it yeah for i that's the one thing about that the trailer for this film as much as i love it it this is not a love story nope it's it's not it's a story yep about love yes tagline exactly. for a famous movie but uh, we'll get to we'll get to the silver linings here in a minute. Let's talk about some trivia first about the movie. So the film was originally set to shoot in the spring of 2008, but was delayed due to Heath Ledger's death. And uh, this is because Michelle Williams was uh, Heath Ledger's girlfriend at the time. Yeah. And they had a daughter together named Matilda. So, uh, you know, the producers and director delayed the film out of respect for her. And uh, rather than going ahead and shooting the film with another actress, because they really wanted Michelle yeah Michelle, uh, and you, like i yeah and she was perfect in I mean, this she's oscar nominated and gosling was perfect as well mm-hmm. like anyone if anyone says ryan gosling has got not a good actor they have obviously not seen this yep. film yep agreed uh according to director Derek, uh seeing france after shooting the first part of the love story you know we talked about this there yep. was there were serious discussions about not doing the second one and just retitling the movie valentine uh i this is the right move i mean it's it's a great case study in like yeah, how do you make a love like, story versus how do you make an anti love story. Like I'm sure if they'd done that, it still would have been a good movie, but I don't think yep. it would have had the Mm-mm. the impact. like emotional impact as that this did. Uh, Derek spent 12 years making this movie. He started working on the script in 1998, uh, and he said that he wrote about 67 drafts, uh, but mostly each draft was just containing con- was content either being added or modified, like. Things based on the set, mm-hmm. on the onset improvisation. So he was making changes during the shooting of it. Uh, yeah, and while he was doing that, while he was shooting documentaries in order to raise funding right. for this movie, and we talked about this. The MPA, uh, MPA originally wanted to give the movie an NC seventeen, but after public allegations of using a double standard to rate uh, portrayals of sex on screen, the organization agreed to hear an appeal. And upon the review, they unanim- unanimously agree that the film should receive an R rating. Well, and I know Ryan. There was a great quote from Ryan Gosling about that too. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, you know, there's been how many movies that show a girl going down on a guy, mm-hmm. and it's fine. There's this weird standard, but where, then you flip it around, yeah. and you know, we get the NC seventeen. It's a weird standard where, for some reason, there's some kind of rule that's like you can't show women having an orgasm on screen. Yeah, which is really stupid because how many times have you seen dudes come in their jeans? You know what I mean? Countless times. <laughs> uh, oh wait, are we talking about real life or in movies? Or real movies versus? <laughs> yeah. Um. It's, they said that you know if they kept if they kept the NC seventeen rating you know it could have been in the first NC seventeen rated movie to get an Oscar nomination because of Michelle Williams right it would have broken some ground that would have been great oh I'm sorry since Henry and June did in 1990 because Henry and June was NC seventeen and was oh Oscar that's nominated. right uh, uh Derek uh, accelerated the relationship's corrosion by starting off screen fights between the actors while they were living together so he had Ryan and uh, Ryan and Michelle set up in this apartment to live together for a yeah, month yeah this one is. This was this, crazy. This is almost Kubrick level, like yeah. Directing. This uh, he told Ryan. Weird. He told Ryan Gosling that uh, you know one night when they were because uh, they slept in separate bedrooms. Mm-hmm. The uh, Ryan and Michelle did, but he told he told Ryan you know to try and go into her bedroom and try to make love to her just to see if they can kind of like build on this idea of uh, their relationship falling apart. But uh, you know Gosling was like hell no, and then just slept on the couch instead. <laughs> um. Michelle Williams, Ryan Gosling, and Faith, I can't pronounce her last name, but the little... The Is Frankie. that the daughter? Okay. Uh, they did actually live in the house together, and it was in Pennsylvania uh, for 30 days. They, they It said that the, the couple struggled with the real stresses of having to share a bathroom together, do the dishes three times a day, which who does the dishes three times a day? I do them like once every three days. I'm lucky to do mine once every three weeks. Yeah. 
They had a grocery budget based on Dean's salary as a house painter and Cindy's as a nurse, which this number cannot be right. Yeah, no, this seems stupidly low. This Apparently, their grocery budget was $200 every two weeks, which maybe they're taking into, into account they have to pay rent and everything on their salary and things like that. So the 200 is just groceries. I'm assuming so. I mean, because that can't be like I would say total. that... With my family, you know, there's me, and my girlfriend, and our two kids. We spend about six hundred dollars in a month, and well, about a month. So two hundred dollars every two weeks is stressful because that's yeah. Like four, well, I don't know. It's it's low. You, you're not eating steak dinners that night. No, not at all. Uh, Gosling said that it was hard uh, for him and Williams at the end of uh, living together to take their wedding to bands get, yeah, off. Their, like, their I can wedding imagine bands, that. Yeah. Uh, the scene, we talked about this too, the scene yeah. where Dean threatens to jump off the bridge uh, while climbing the fence uh, to get Sydney to confess what was wrong wasn't in the script. Ryan Gosling had to find a way to let Michelle Williams' character reveal her pregnancy. Yeah, that was a, that was a great improv on his mm-hmm. part. So she didn't know he she didn't know he was going to try and jump over this bridge. So yeah, like because he was told to get her to reveal it anyway, anyway, and she was told do her best to resist. Mm-hmm. And they, that's how you direct. Yeah, that that's, is how you direct it. This is like a master class in directing drama. Yes, it is. Uh, last little bit of trivia in here. Uh, it's so is this out true? There. Yes, it's really? so out there, but I love it. It has nothing to do with the movie itself, but Sydney's car in the movie has a Pennsylvania license plate of CHT8635, and apparently this is the same license plate on the car driven by Jim Halpert. Wait, in so the does office. this take place in Pennsylvania? Were we completely off base with that whole New York thing? It well, it's possible because I mean they they share an apartment. You know, off camera in Pennsylvania. Maybe they did shoot in Pennsylvania. Oh. I mean, I'm sure it probably is probably cheaper than shooting in New York. I'm sure. Let's Sorry, close. Yes. I mean, I said up north, so yeah, close, close enough. enough. All right, Mally. We're in whole... Florida. Everything's up north. Yeah, yeah. The whole reason we're here. What is the silver lining for Blue Valentine? I'll let you go first. Um. Do you have one? I. Don't I'm not gonna lie. This is, the I, first, this is episode three, and we already don't. I don't <laughs> have one. I just <sighs> there's no kind okay, of glimmer of hope at the end of this. There is. Okay, let me think of how to word this. So this is what I was getting into a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. The whole conflicting ideals of Dean and Cindy. So the, I hope this makes sense when I say it out loud. Dean doesn't change. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, like he doesn't really have an yes, arc. Yes, he gets he his hair gets balding and all stuff. But <laughs> the, his emotionally, Dean doesn't grow. Mm-hmm. He's the same like romantic person he is in the flashback as he is in the present. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe he's a little more drunk in the present scenes, mm-hmm. but he's that same kind of. He believes in romantic love, right? Where Again, going back to logic versus emotion, Mm -hmm. Cindy does grow. Like she becomes, you know, Dean stuck in that like emotional field he was in where she kind of grows up, I guess. She matures and he doesn't. So your silver lining is that they grow emotionally, mentally. I don't even. I don't even think that's still a silver lining because that's still kind of depressing. Well, it's an experience. Um, you could say they had an experience that changed them more or less for the better. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a silver lining. I mean, that's the whole point of the word lining. It's you're not, right. It's not a right. silver filling. It's a silver lining. So, well, I mean, in the way the movie leaves off, like you're, you don't know is the relationship over? Mm-hmm. Maybe, but is there still a seed there for it to grow? And Absolutely. That's what my silver lining is. My silver lining is that. Not all breakups are bad. Right. You you don't... Even if it seems like it in the moment and you hate each other or one person is hurt and the other person is you know content with the breakup, that's not always a bad thing. No. And it doesn't always mean that it's over permanently. Things can rekindle. Uh, I've got a friend now who... Uh, not a friend. It's actually, it's actually my brother. He dated... <laughs> well, my brother's my friend. Yeah. He he dated this this girl he knew in high school, and they were high school sweethearts for years, and then broke up. And they had a kid together at the time. Uh, and you know now they're not together. Well, they weren't together for a long mm-hmm. period of time, but now they're together again. They're married. They've been married for years. They have another child together, and they're living 
Yeah. yeah. Fine. So breakups can happen. Those are sad. This movie leaves you with an ambiguous... I would say it's... For, you know, you can argue with me on this, but it's ambiguous that they break up or not. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's complete. It's implied heavily. But yes. Until I see divorce papers... Nope, no, they they, nope. they didn't break up as far as I'm concerned. So nope. things can come, things can and things can get better. And not only that, now that they've been to their worst moments, which Dean even says, "This is me at my worst." You mm-hmm. said for better or for worse, this is me at my worst. Maybe that they've admitted that they've come to the head of what their real problems are together. Maybe things can be can worked out. Well, and and contrary to what she says, the whole "I'm so out of love with you," I don't buy it. I don't buy it. That was a heat of the, like him throwing the wedding ring. That was a heat of the moment type situation. Yeah, her it's, saying that's a heat of the moment. Exactly. Um, because he, from what we see, he has done nothing wrong in this movie. For me, at least, I saw nothing. I will. Okay, I won't say he's done nothing wrong. Um. Because, I mean, obviously, because I, again, I think it goes back to that whole maturity thing. He's, you know, he's always going to be the guy we see in the past is the same guy, you know, we see in the present. Mm -hmm, Whereas, like, you know, she kind of, you know, she matures and he doesn't. Like, yeah. Um, I keep repeating myself on that, but that's just, (laughs) that's how I see this movie. Um, but I mean, going back, to what you said about not all breakups are a bad thing. Like I know myself, like I've been through countless breakups or whatever that, you know, when they happened, it was, you know, some of the worst, like it felt like the worst thing that could ever happen. But I look back on it now. It's like, well, that shaped me into who I am today. Exactly. Like that's, I, if I had not gone through that, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. hundred percent. And so, I mean, I would, I mean, I definitely never want this movie to be made, but let me, Throw out a blue Valentine too. Let me see where they're at now. Mm-hmm. Let me let me get like a ten minute epilogue. Let me know where they're at. There you go. Um, so we always like to give you an alternative. This movie obviously has a sad ending uh, or a downer ending, as all our movies do. So what's a what's an alternative? What's a movie someone should watch after they watch Blue Valentine to kind of get them back in the swing of things and not leaving everything on such a sour note? Um, this is actually something I do every time I watch Blue Valentine. Within a day or two, I always end up watching this movie because I need that pick me up. Crazy stupid love. Let's keep let's keep that Ryan Gosling train going. Not only that, that movie uh, starts off with a breakup. Yeah, yeah, it, it's almost yeah. reversed. And actually, it starts out with a breakup, and they're actually back together by the end of it. There you go. See, not all breakups are bad. Boom. Proven proven silver lining theories already. I'm watch that tonight. Actually, That's a good movie. Anyway, uh, yours. Sir. My pick me up, and we actually already mentioned the tagline for it. Yep, it's a movie about love, but it's not a love story. I'm pitching Five Hundred Days of Summer. Yeah, Deschanel and Levitt together having this uh, great movie. This is such a good movie. You know, he falls in love with this girl, and they break up again. Not all breakups are a bad thing. He ends up learning a lesson. You know, yeah. just you can't force someone to be in love with you, and once you you can't fall in love with the first person you see which is funny because the way that movie ends but yeah <laughs> that's a great movie it's funny it definitely will give you you know high hopes and it proves our theory that breakups aren't always bad right that breakups can be a good thing Man. all right so we always forget to do this clue for next week's episode do you want to give one do you remember what we're doing next yes, week? Yes, I remember. I just don't know. <laughs> a subtle hint. At, or do, you want me, to, do you want me to get one? You go for it because I feel like mine is going to not be subtle enough. <laughs> hmm. I will say that Victoria's Secret ads can change you. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. They can change you. Do with that what you will. That is our hint for next week's episode. Uh, so be sure to tune in and uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Please, since you're on iTunes, please subscribe to us. Give us a rating. Uh, like us on Facebook. You can find us by just searching Silver Linings Playlist. Uh, leave us comments. You know, let us know if there's a movie with a downer ending that you would like us to do. We are open to suggestions, please. Absolutely. We already have a huge slate of movies Very lined up. And we've even got some suggestions that are already on our list. So we have a lot to come up. Uh, that are coming up so like i said please subscribe please rate please like us on facebook uh mally any last words before we sign off well as always excelsior Excelsior.